Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Let's go. John Duncan here, Blazer Retreat Podcast, here with my co-hosts, Jimmy Marion and Darian Smith. As you guys saw the video from Cahaba last week, hey, we love Yaks here at UAB. We love Yaks on the Blazer Victory Podcast. Last night, Yaks officially announced his intentions to return to UAB for his senior citizen. <laughs> senior citizen? Senior <laughs> season. <laughs> Hey, hey. hey, we hope he's here till he's a senior citizen. We'll take it. Yeah, hey, uh, we'll take it. <laughs> oh, man, we're leaving that in, by the way. But, uh, <laughs> guys, it's ex- exciting times. I mean, we, you know, you kind of worry about, especially when Yax tweeted Tuesday. You're like, oh, man, what's, what's going to happen on Tuesday? But how big is this for Andy Kennedy in this UAB basketball program? to get the reigning AAC Defensive Player of the Year, the AAC Tournament MVP, back another year in Bartow Arena. And, Jimmy, I'll let you start start off. Hey, I'm thinking about the word monumental. I mean, when you have a guy of that caliber return to UAB, despite all the speculations, it's huge. Um, in today's college environment, with so much movement that exists with players, switching teams, coaches, switching teams every offseason, you really don't know what to expect. You've got your fingers crossed. We've talked about Yaks a lot, and all of our hope and desire was that, hey, everything would work itself out and that by some way Yaks would be returned to the UAB basketball roster for his senior season, and that's what we got. But again, with a disparity between the quote-unquote G5 leagues and the P5 teams, if you will, uh, for as much interest as Yaks would have garnered on the open market, we heard, you know, numbers that were certainly exceeding five hundred thousand dollars, eight hundred thousand dollars that could be potentially in play uh, for a guy like him. But for him to see the vision of what Andy Kennedy has established and what Andy Kennedy and his staff are continuing to build here at UAB, for him to see the future, I think for him to feel the love of the UAB fan base, that connection that's real, um, for all those reasons to keep a guy like Yax at UAB is absolutely monumental. Yeah, it was. it's huge, and um, I think it's cool that the, the leader of the team, the AAC Defensive Player of the Year, the all, AA, AAC All-Conference Player, he was the first guy to like officially announce it. It was also cool. So to have that guy already took is uh is major, and th- and then to see Christian Coleman kind of say, "Oh, let's run it back," you know. So he confirmed it right there, and that that right there set you up with a great backcourt. We already we don't even have to wait to hear Butter. Butter already told you, you know, <laughs> like, "Hey, we're gonna run this thing back. We'll be back next year." So you know where his heart is at. Um, so. Um, I'm confident in AJ Vasquez. You know, I'm confident that he'll be back. Um, it's just great to have momentum, man. You know, and then I, I, it was smart. You see the the whole, you see Andy Kennedy getting into it. Um, all the fans are behind it. You see the basketball account itself, like, hey, this is a great time to re up on these season, uh, <clears throat> these season tickets. You know. It's just, it feels like momentum is already built for next year. It feels like, it just feels like it's going to be different already. And another another thing, I was thinking about, about this on my drive home, and I'm going to try not to be long with this, but it's cool to see a player place value on something other than just money, money, money. Because money is, money exists to help us feeling the void or to help us feel feelings right it, it, money is there to help us feel happy right a lot of times people chase the money that and they think it's going to be automatically go towards happiness and i listen to a lot of different podcasts and one player i like to listen to is Shaq. and and one thing he tell you all the time is like i got this big old mansion and i'm in here by myself you know because all the people he's loved he's ran off in his life and he just he he makes himself a cautionary tale. He's done it so many times. I recommend any, anybody listen to him. And I'm pretty sure Yax got a he got an NIL bag here, right? But uh, you know, I met my wife here. I met you guys here, right? 
I have so many people that I call friends. I all come from here. And I came up here a complete stranger, right? But I couldn't see myself, like, leaving or going anywhere. I couldn't see. I have four or five godchildren now, all Alabama-based. I've been in multiple weddings. I can still call these guys that I know Coach McCants. I know Rob, who's who's on uh, on the basketball staff. I went to college with both of those guys. One Matt is on the is on the um, football staff. I know uh, AJ's wife, who's on the basketball staff. She actually helped us have our baby. Her name is Fatima. She she works over here at UAB. Like it's it's so intertwined. I can keep on going with the relations relationships that were birthed just from coming here, just from committing and playing football here. I come on, man. Like it's crazy. I've been to funerals. I have. I showed you guys that picture of um, was around Christmas time when I meet I meet with my um, one of our good friends that passed away from cancer that we met at UAB. Their family meets with us every Christmas, every single Christmas, and they give us those uh, a whole bunch of presents because a it, car full, yeah, a car full. That is that is every Christmas, and we 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 stay in contact all year. But we meet, we make sure we meet every year. And that does something for us, and that does so- something from for them as well. Like because she helped take care of our kids, so it's she's like, oh, her name was Mercedes. They like, oh, this Sadie's, and every time they like, I know Sadie's would be so happy about this. I'm saying all of this to say, I can keep on going with all of the relationships, but I wouldn't change it. Like it's the love that I got here. I Ty Long is my boy. Ty Long is my boy. I probably talk to his granddad more than I talk to him. And isn't that crazy? And that's 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 because of because of relationships and what you should value is happiness, right? Not just money. Money is important. I ain't finna sit here and act like, oh man, don't chase no, go get your go get your money. But I can sit here as a 34-year-old man now. I can sit here and tell you that there are things that are fill you up much more than money would much more than money would and those are the things you should value so just tying that back into nil transfer portal like i'm just glad that yax didn't wasn't a mercenary right he just wasn't a he wasn't a guy just out here chasing it's a balance to everything and and god to provide whatever you need but trust me those relationships that love that you get that is the most important. If you feel like you're at home, that's where you need to be. You can end up going somewhere, SEC, riding the bitch, just in the bad. Like you don't know, you never know what's gonna happen. You, I couldn't imagine. You guys been to college? You guys know? Can you imagine yourself bouncing around three or four times, meeting a new different set of friends, meeting a new different group of people, just trying to fit back in? All think about all of that process and having to go back through that. I don't know how guys do that. If you find some place that you're comfortable and you're good and you got a bunch of good people around you, stay there. And Birmingham loves Yaks like no, none other. Like he is, he is going to go down as one of the most loved athletes here, period, because he gets it. So um, I didn't want to make it too long. I knew I called an ISO right there. just had to run an ISO. But I just felt like me going through that experience in college athletics and knowing how how valuable it's been for me just being here. Now, I didn't have all the options, and we was broke as hell when I played football. But I wouldn't change it for the world. My whole life basically started over again because I committed to a school. And now I have such a I – have, I have so many friends and people around me that love me. Like I said, I've got like five guys. One of the children, if their parents were to pass away, we take care of the, over, over the dad, over the – we take care of the children. Like, it runs deep. It's deeper than just money. Just money. So somebody tell Memphis, if it, <laughs> like, and all the Memphis trolls, it's not just about money, man. It's, it's much more than that. But money is important, so make sure it's a balance to it. That's all. All that to say, we're great to have Yax back. I'm glad you value. I'm glad to see that your character values more than just the love of money. Well, John, I was going to say uh, one thing as well. I wanted to give an example. So on the topic of Memphis, you got a guy like Jordan Brown, who is a center, a 6'11", 225 guy, who spent his fifth year at Memphis this past year. 
He came over from Louisiana. He was in the Sun Belt in the two years prior uh, at Louisiana uh, Lafayette. He averaged 15.3 points uh, in year one there, 8.6 boards. And then the following year, the year prior to him going to Memphis, he averaged 19 points and 8.6 rebounds a game in 32 minutes played per game. Guess what he did this year at Memphis? He played in 18 total games, and he averaged 10 minutes a game. He averaged four points and two rebounds a game. Like, so that's the that kind of stuff. That makes me sad for him. Like, yeah. that, that really does. Season. I hate that. Yeah. His final season. And, uh, you know, that's the kind of risk that you may take if you leave a great opportunity for what is perceived to be a better opportunity to, to piggyback off of what uh, Darian said. And I would even add to that. Um, I actually look at the money side of this as like a that Yax is making the right decision because, yes, he could go to NC State, West Virginia, UC, wherever. Just name the school, right? Um, and if he does, he will at the same time have to earn his role there, the, the role in which he's earned at UAB, and that may work out. It's it's a risk, though. But when you look at the path at UAB, he still has to do all this stuff in the offseason to continue his progression to hopefully this time next year we're seeing yaks on NBA draft boards, which I think we will uh, see in projections. Um, that gets me just pumped up thinking about, by the way. Um, but, you know, here at UAB, his path to the big earnings is right there in front of him, just as it would be elsewhere. We get TV. We have those opportunities. We play in big games. He's under an excellent head coach. He's got a great staff. He's going to have the ball in his hands. He's going to be able to be doing all types of different things to expand his game, hopefully continue to hit beyond the arc next year and to get a little bit even more, um, you know, his body prepared for professional play. But I would even argue that as it relates to money, that just shows how, I don't know what the right word is, professional you know, futuristic. He's he's very grown as it relates to like thinking about his future, and I think he's making an excellent decision that truly does benefit us tremendously. One hundred percent agree, and it says something too about the culture Andy Kennedy has instilled with this basketball program too. You know, you don't lose a guy like Jelly to the portal, um, go to the portal again, or because of NIL elsewhere, and you're able to rate. Uh, you know, bring back Yaks and Christian Coleman for another year. I, I, just, I just think it speaks volumes for Andy Kennedy in this program. Um, but before we go any further, last episode I failed to mention, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You know, of course, I missed out on the probably our highest viewed YouTube video in a while. How many views uh, make, we get, John? <laughs> I think up to 500, man. I mean, th that's really good just hey, for – thank you all. Uh, video yeah thank you I, i'm sure we had a lot of san diego state fans uh checking us out too um but and we're, and we're gonna get into that san diego state game in a, in a few minutes but yeah if you are not subscribed to our youtube channel go ahead and hit the subscribe button now so you do not miss any future episodes of the blazer retreat podcast if you're listening whether it's spotify apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, radio there is a link in your uh show description to click and it will allow you to subscribe to the youtube channel so definitely do that if you have not already also i mentioned cahaba at the front shout out again to cahaba brewing company for sponsoring this podcast guys it, I, to be honest it felt weird this week not having another watch party because we had so many <laughs> over there um at, at cahaba you know for the aac tournament and the ncaa tournament um, but shout out again to cahaba for sponsoring this podcast you know the oka uba ipa is one of my favorites um if you have not checked that out Definitely uh, give that a taste. You can go to your local supermarket, grocery store, wherever you get your um, beverages and get a six pack of the Oka Uba IPA. But guys, I think this is a good, good place. Well, before we transition. So as Darian mentioned earlier, Christian Coleman is coming back. He said he announced that he's coming back. Vasquez announced that he will be making an announcement on Friday, according to his Twitter. Uh, we still haven't heard from Eric Gaines, um, but uh, the post game, he said he was coming back. So hopefully we'll you know take him for that word there. Um, but that's all I have right now. I was I was kind of interested in what Do Daniel Ortiz what he posted. I know we have Jabari McGee. I know we have him coming coming in. He's he's right now the number three ranked player out of JUCO. He's a guard. He's from down the street from where I'm from, which is cool, you know, and, and from the Silk Pike County. But uh, 
I saw Dio post like he shared Yax's status and he, he said, "Be great, Brody." So it, you know, like that's kind of like, oh, what are you saying? Are you saying like, hey, go be great? I'm gonna go do my thing, yeah. or you know what I'm saying? So that I, I kind of I may be reaching. I may be reaching here. But I, I, didn't, I didn't know exactly what that meant. You know, uh, we saw the news that Dunning, Barry Dunning, went into the portal already. Um, so it'd be interesting. We're going we're gonna, to uh, interesting. We're going to have a very crowded backcourt, especially if, if Vasquez announced. Hopefully we get games. I really want games. I'm going to touch on games. I really want him to come back. I remember the year before, it was kind of like, eh, you know, maybe he probably just yeah. need to move on. It was kind of like because he was ill. He was an ill-fitting piece. It wasn't m- missing. And, like, the first half of this year, it still wasn't really. Mm-hmm. But I say second half on, he really found his spot as the, the lead point guard. Like, it was beautiful to watch to see him grow into the player he he is now. Like, he, that's all we wanted for him the whole time here. And his importance was put on full display against SDSU. He was the one I felt like that was not afraid of the big lights. Like, I felt like it took everybody else to – minus JD. I feel like it took everybody else time to kind of settle in. And it was Eric that was putting us on his back, like, able to handle the ball. It was everything we talked about in the pod. Like, we're going to need Eric to do this and do that. And he was not afraid of the moment at all. And um, his playmaking, his defense, he means a lot to this team. And I've seen so much of an improvement in him. I really want Eric to come back. Like, I, yeah, really, want him to, I really want Eric to come back because I just seeing him settle into that role. Um, so I'm going to be – I know last year he flirted around with the draft process. But I would, I would make an argument to him that this is the best that you've looked in co- as a college basketball player, period. But it was only half of a season. You can build off of this. This is what we wanted to see. So if EG comes back, I'm gonna be fully elated. Uh, if we get, you know, Vasquez back Friday, I'm crossing my fingers. But I'll be back. We have our back court with our front court right there. We'll see what Dio's, um, you know, what he chooses to do. And then we'll have McGee coming in. I'm like, I'm already looking at this team like, whoo, boy. You know, we get us a big and a wing. We off and rolling, man. That would be that would be all five returning starters off a team that won the American Athletic Championship and gave San Diego State a hell of a fight in the first round of the NCAA tournament. So it's like, how rare would that be? Because you hear those stories. That's the kind of when I can just envision it now on all of our ESPN two and ESPN U games next year. This team is a veteran team. They return all five starters from like it'd be like just the story that they would start with. And like that's the kind of team roster makeup that the people that are in the AP voting and like we start winning games, like that's going to make people really believe that UAB is not going to be dangerous just in the months of November and December, but potentially there in March as well. So fingers crossed that we do see EG return. We do see Butta and Vasquez make it official because those are the opportunities that are so rare to say, oh, we got a freaking tournament championship team and all five starters are coming back. We would be set to have what could be AK's best season yet, and that's saying something. So and and McGee just he is still playing basketball right now. McGee just yeah. led his team to the Elite Eight in JUCO. He is a dude. Like he is, he's been committed forever. He he that dude bleeds green and gold from what I can tell. So that's awesome. Already. Already. And he is I want people to understand like he is gonna be a crucial piece to this. Like he it, it's cool if you can have these main pieces and you can supplement a team that's already put together really well. If we can get us one of those Mogbo type bigs or a big bruiser type of guy to go along with this front court that we have already and we got McGee coming in. One guy I'm excited to see and we probably won't even be able to see play is KJ Sattersfield. We yeah. saw we saw like two or three moments from him this past year when he was able to get in the game and he looked like a dude. I'm like, Jesus, he's a big guard. And I'm like, man, like he'll have another time. I'm pretty sure he redshirted this year. So, and then we we still got the culture. I feel like the culture guy is Tony Tony. You know, I would love to see TT back. He wasn't afraid of, I feel like, his rebound. And in the SDSU game, and his tough defense and his motor really helped change that game around. Um, so if 
I mean, the skies can be the limit for this team. And if we can supplement them with these right pieces, just just a player or two, that's all we need. And I think we'll be off and rolling. Hey, John, one more note before we hop into San Diego State. Is I just want to give a shout out to the uh, the guy that runs Ever Faithful, Ever Loyal. So I'm subscribed to his uh, his post. So I get emails yeah, when Charles, he makes a new story. Uh, uh, Charles. Charles. Think, yeah. Yeah, this Charles has got a portal tracker. If you go to everfaithful, everloyal.com, and you look at his page, I mean, that's how I even saw the uh, – because I haven't been on social as much as as, uh, as previously. But that's how I saw it today. It said, whose status is up in the air? It said Alejandro Vasquez, and it says announcing plans Friday. has a link to the tweet uh, that Vasquez had made. And he's got which players are UAB linked to, you know, big men, guards, Juco. He's got write-ups, rundown of each. So if you guys aren't following Ever Faithful, Ever Loyal, uh, please do so because he's putting in good work. Um, and uh, we're certainly excited, you know, to talk about roster construction. We're going to dive deep. It, we're getting into some fun time on the Patreon. We're going to talk about, okay, well, these guys are back. What does that mean? What's the ceiling? What's the floor? Like, where, where these pieces fit? Like, that's the stuff that our patrons just eat up. So, you know, if you're not subscribed to the Patreon, just wait till we're in March Right now, we get into like mid to late April and even in the months of May and June, we start really looking at who's on campus, you know, what we're hearing. That's the kind of stuff you're going to want to be subscribed to. This. You, you'll hear a little bit on here, but we deep dive and we talk ball on the Patreon. Definitely. Yeah. And that link is patreon.com slash blazerpod. So, hey, I know March was kind of a slow month on the Patreon. And we, we just did so much on the free show, guys. Hey, there was such good content, you know, obviously with you covering UAB's run through the AAC tournament and into the NCAA tournament. And, you know, now that it's off season, hey, the free show is still going to be around, you know, previous years past in the free show. I mean, I wouldn't say we would take off a couple of months, but we maybe just do one every now and then. But no, we're going to do at least a few a month, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the free show but definitely patreon recruiting content tons of tons of off-season content um and, and as it relates to not just basketball but football as well uh, football is about to finish spring practice that's so crazy to say but uh at, you know next week and we'll be there to cover uh, football so lots of great things patreon.com slash blazer pod only five dollars a month or you can prepay for a full year and save ten percent but Darren and like and, and like Jimmy was saying, this is where this is the fun stuff. Like, go over to the Patreon and check it out. It's worth it. I mean, we get down to it and we have real nitty gritty discussions on like real detailed, specific discussions. So if you're a real Blazer fan and you really want to know, I know sometimes on the Facebook group, I visit there every now and then. A Save UAB Facebook group and people have all these questions and stuff. I'm like, man, we talked about that like three weeks ago. You mm-hmm. know, like it, not only did we talk about it, but we gave you all the all the nuggets, every mm-hmm. every little screw yes. that you wanted to know. So I I love talking about stuff like that. And then we go to the Patreon and then having these two guys here, and it's just they get so much information. I can just play off of it. It's so cool. So I I advise anybody. You know, if you really want, if you're really a Blazer fan and you're really searching for more content, yeah, it's worth it. It's five dollars a month or prepaid prepaid for the whole year. Definitely, and where it's five dollars, man. Y'all can't even get a sandwich for five dollars. I mean, or you you let alone you can't get a cup of coffee for five dollars. Like iced coffee, I I went to uh, Dunkin' Donuts. It was like six bucks the other day, which reminds me not to make my own coffee at home. But <laughs> hey, five dollars a month. Definitely uh, check it out if you have not already. And Patreon supporters, we are coming in April. We're going to finish off that Q&A. We're going to do some good things in the Patreon. So, all right, guys, we got about five minutes. Uh, what stood out to y'all in regards to the San Diego State game? It's been, a, you know, about a week. So we've kind of set on it. And I know Darian and Jim, you've already said some things, even this episode. Um but just the grit and the fight out of the guys. They easily could have rolled up, you know, when they were down 12, I think, in the first half. And just, you know, it's not, it's just SDSU is tough, you know, but shout out to the guys for fighting, taking the freaking lead late in the second half. Oh, so close. Oh, so close. But Jimmy, what are, what are just some of your initial thoughts? 
Uh, yeah, for me, uh, same same concept here. You know, definitely kudos to UAB for keeping the game close. I mean, nobody believed in UAB. We were talking in the group thread amongst the three of us. I was sharing clips of uh, content from other podcasts and college basketball shows and 12-5 upsets, and UAB was an afterthought. And I know that there were other 12-5 upsets, but UAB was right there. Uh, UAB had control of the game late, had an opportunity to win, but just came up a little bit short. Um, I thought Yax, you know, he was in foul trouble all game long, but I thought in the second half he was really starting to take the game over despite, you know, being in foul trouble. Uh, so shout out to him. He's only going to grow from that experience. We talked a lot about Yax today, but, you know, for me, as I was sitting back watching the game, I was thinking, why cannot or why can Yax not have a similar trajectory his senior season as you saw from Ladee? You look at Yax's statistics. Uh, they're better than what Ladee was able to do his junior season. And you saw how good Ladee was. Speaking of him, he was as good as advertised. He stretched the floor. You know, he did three early. Uh, he was even bigger than what he looked like on film. Like he was a big physical force. Uh, you know, him hitting the the tough turnaround midi that he did late in the ball game. The we're fade all away. Him. Yeah, that was rough. He had a big game, 26 points against Yale. Um but we had no answer for him. He had 18 shot attempts, uh, which was the third highest for him. They just kept going through him all night. 11 made field goals tied a season high for Ladee. So UAB didn't have an answer for that. They're not going to see many players like that, even in the AAC. But I think a guy specifically like uh, Yax is really going to be able to grow from that. Um, outside of that, I thought JD, shout out to him. We know that JD is uh, you know, departing as a senior. And I thought over the last two games, like he really stepped up specifically against San Diego State. Really in that first half where things were getting away from UAB, he was able to come in and he, he matched Ladee's physicality uh, to a certain extent. Butta was tremendous. Uh, we don't have to go through all the stats, but Butta shooting the ball uh, 7 of 14, 5 of 10 from 3 against a defense like San Diego State. I mean, kudos to, to Butta. Uh, tremendous you know, score and uh, really looking forward to what he's going to be able to do for UAB next year. A couple more Final thoughts uh, at one point in the game because of all the foul trouble. I remember telling one of you guys, I looked up and we had Tony, Tony, Will Shaver and Daniel Ortiz in the same five man lineup like that. were on the floor together. And that's not to say anything about any of them individually, just from a lineup perspective in the NCAA tournament game. We had Dunning out there playing minutes, who's now departed UAB that played in, I think, five total games from January till now. I mean, the foul trouble just really uh, took UAB out of rhythm in this ball game. So again, kudos for them for almost pulling it off. And then last thought was when you look at the statistics, one thing that really stood out to me in this ball game was UAB was 13 of 33 from two point range, which was a season low. So UAB connected on 20 field goals, seven of which was from deep. So they actually shot a decent field goal percentage from three, 35% for us is, uh, is not bad, you know, but ultimately we just weren't able to connect, you know, from, an, from interior wise, 22, I think it was total paint uh, points. When you look at UAB's wins across the season, UAB averaged 37 roughly points in the paint in those games. They had 22 points in the paint in this matchup. So we were taking tough twos. We weren't connecting. We weren't finishing down low. Again, uh, we had guys playing that weren't necessarily playing, you know, as you look at the AAC tournament. But those are just some things that stood out, you know, for me. I know we're running out of time. So I want to toss it over to our guy, Darian, next. Yeah, yeah, I, I ain't gonna be long. Um, referee whistle. That's what stood out to me because the L- D was able to be as physical, and as he should be, he's a physical specimen. But we weren't afforded the same thing, so our guys got in foul trouble, and it sucks. Like I'm, a, I'm just being real. Uh, nothing to take away from Ladi. Ladi is very skilled to be his size, and I think that's the next step that Yax should look at. If they they got they gave it to Ladi in the middle of their zone. And he was eating. He was eating because of his skill, superb footwork, spin moves, fadeaways, whatever you need. He he had counters. Basketball is about counters. He, he if you stopped one thing, he had another thing coming at you. So I love how he played. Uh, you know, I talked about E.G. already. He was great, but it was great with his big shot making. Um, and another, another thing I came away with, I think that game kind of exposed things that we need to get better at individually as players, I think Yax can take his skill to another level, especially after witnessing Ladee. If Yax gets, the, gets that skill that he has is over with, Butter can get better with his ball handling. Christian Coleman, I expect him to hit the weight room, you know, and then I come back a stronger player. 
it's just um, uh, and who else was it? I think Vasquez he needs to get a tighter handle. I think that 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 game right there is just kind of was like individually. These are the things you if we come back and we work on these things, you guys will be unstoppable. If Do is more of a consistent sniper, not just here and there, but the consistency of it, of all his mechanics and everything, and his ball handle, like being able to handle ball pressure and skill is things that I believe. And for EGs to, to get bigger, you know, he's slight; he can be taken advantage of by small, I mean, by bigger guards. Get bigger. Work on finishing. He work on his float, his floater game in the middle, finishing in between, not just threes and layups, but floaters. You know, just making plays in the paint, playing off of two feet. If EG can do those things, they all have these small little things that they can improve in. If they do that and they come back, they put this thing together. I think, I think we could be like it. Final Four, Elite Eight team, but that's the UAB fan that be talking. That is that that's the UAB because I say that because I look and I'm like, the biggest takeaway, we should have been in the Sweet Sixteen. SDSU beat the sh- out of Yale, <laughs> and they beat the and we would have been right there in this. We would have been in the Sweet Sixteen, man, and I know we would have smashed Yale. And I, I I'm salty against the refs because I feel like they took that from us. So, yeah. Hey, Auburn fans feel the same way, though. So <laughs> I feel that there was just a lot of bad officiating in the NCAA tournament this year, which normally, I mean, you'd get that some, but there were some, like, game-altering decisions made from the officiating. So, oh, well. But, um, guys, we need to run. We will be back next week. Um, again, Patreon, patreon.com slash blazerpod. We'll be back on the free show to kind of give you a rundown of what happens to the rest of the roster um in regards to uab basketball we've gonna have a spring football game to recap in a couple weeks with uab football um but again patreon.com slash blazer pod just five dollars a month helps support us helps gives you ex- gives you access to exclusive content um go ahead hey if you haven't already put a deposit in for getting season tickets for uab basketball next year 2024 2025 is going to be a special season for uab Hopefully we can get to Darren's expectations, <laughs> but I, I, I definitely know I, I this team this year, if they beat SDSU, could have made a deeper run in the NCAA, in the NCAA tournament. So you for damn sure be believe it next year, especially if we're able to bring some pieces back uh, with this team. But guys, I hope you everybody has a happy Easter weekend, and we'll see you next week. Jimmy, go ahead and finish us out. A hell of a run for UAB basketball this year. Just blaze.